right, welcome to topic 2b, where we are going to see how we can use SPSS to calculate basic measures of center and variability. Very important that you do things by hand first, whether it's completely by hand or with the slight conveniences of a spreadsheet, to help me understand conceptually what we're doing here. But it's also at the same time important to see sort of a glimpse into the future where you have large data sets and a lot of analysis that can be done right now. A software package like SPSS, very handy. But it does all the calculations, of course, for me and just presents the results. So I loaded the uh, set A SPSS file from the Psychology, uh, the, not psychology, the statistics and data analysis for nursing. That's the file we're always going to use in our examples. Uh, the URL to that file is in that book that we showed in the very, very first introduction video. So go look at that if you want to uh, know more. So I've loaded it up, done nothing else. Do this. So we want to calculate the mean, standard deviation, variance. Let's pick a variable. Let's pick the age uh, at first birth. So uh, we've, uh, not me personally, but this is a survey done on a thousand different women from low income communities. And one of the variables that the survey is measuring is the age that the women were when they gave birth for the first time. Let's analyze that variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Analyze tab at the top. Let me just see if we can see this. Okay, Analyze at the top. Then we're going to go to Descriptive Statistics. But this time we're going to select Descriptives that little window pops up we can make this window bigger sure now for you it might look like this with an empty variable window on the right you want to select the variable I'm interested in age at first birth click on this arrow move it over and that is now the variable that I'm interested in I want to click on options to the right of that and I see some options that I want to display in my output the mean I don't care about the sum. I want the standard deviation. I want the variance. I want under this, where is it now? Range. Minimum, maximum. Yeah, I'm welcome to see that too. I don't care about the standard error right now. That doesn't mean anything. We still have to discuss those concepts. Let's click on continue. Say OK. Here. Check if we can see this. Hopefully it's big enough for you. I don't know how to zoom this. Figure this out, right? Press a random button. Uh, yes, I can zoom here. Good. All right. So here we see some uh, familiar names familiar terms but also some we haven't seen before the mean we've seen we've heard that before standard deviation variance and the minimum is just the lowest score that we have the maximum is the highest score that we have the range is simply the difference between those very descriptive term the range of values exactly what you would think minimum to maximum a uh, gap of 30, just over 31 years. All right. So that gets us started. Now, let me close this. And I don't want to see that. Back to my main data view window. I want to calculate maybe the mean. No, mean. I already did the mean, sorry. The median, mode, and things like that. So let's go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics. Let's go to frequencies this time. Make sure your variable is in the right window. 
age at first birth. Then I don't, maybe this is checked here at the bottom left, this display frequency table. That's not what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to uncheck that because I don't need to see the frequency table for what I'm trying to do now. I do want to click on the statistics button at the top right to tell SPSS what I want to show. I want to show the mean, sure, median, mode. I don't care about the sum. Uh, quartiles I'll do so we can talk about that. Minimum, maximum, variance, range. Yeah, let's do all of those again. Uh, let me just think. I had notes here, so I just want to make sure. Do I care about skewness right now? Later. I'll do it later. Okay. Let's go OK. Down here. I like this button. Discovered a new button. That allows me to zoom in. Scrolling is a little slow, but nonetheless. Okay, that's much better, right? Well, learn something. I figured out how to zoom. Yay me. Okay. So, what can we see here? So, we see the mean. Same as before. Is it the same? Well, same 19.68, 19.68 different ways of calculating some of those things Two different ways to get the same thing median it's new a little less a little less and the mode is uh, a little less than that so now visualize I don't have the drawing thing open to to show you if you remember a the position of the mean median and mode can indicate the skewness. So if the mean is bigger, so from left to right, let's go left to right, small to big. It's mode, which is the peak, median, and then mean. That indicates that the tail is long to the right, which indicates positive skew. That I, yes, these numbers are calculated for me. I have to interpret them. What do they mean? Tell me something. Okay. So I also get standard deviation, and you'll notice it is the same as before. Exactly the same. So two different some of these things. Just checking my notes and see if everything I want to say and point out here. So numbers are the same in both of those uh, paths to get the mean and the standard deviation. We have the okay we have the range again we have the minimum maximum so all these first ones are good let's talk about percentiles for a second the 25th percentile is the score that separates the all scores 25 percent of all scores occur below that and therefore 75 of all 75% of all scores occur above that. The 50th percentile is, of course, my halfway, cut it exactly in the middle. Half of the scores are less than this, half of the scores are more than this. That's exactly the median. Okay, see how that's the same as the median? The median is just another name for the 50th percentile. 75th percentile is the score or the line where it separates it into two pieces. 75% of all scores occur to the left of that, lower. 25% occur above that, to the right of that. So the 25th percentile and this, uh, is also called the first quartile because it's a quarter of 100. 75th percentile is called the third quartile. And then you can calculate, which we'll see in a, in a second perhaps, uh, the range. If you want to exclude the potentially more extreme scores, you could say, well, let's cut off. Let's throw away the bottom 25%. Let's throw away the top 25% and focus on that middle 50%. What range does that have? So from 17.16 to 21.21, .21, that range. The difference between those two 
we call the interquartile range. Now, cu cutting away 25% on either side is a little bit extreme, but sometimes that's what we can do. All right, so let's close that. That's all we want to say. That. Let's. So you have two ways for some of these standard deviation, mean, variance, range. Two ways to get those numbers descriptive statistics, analyze tab, descriptive statistics, frequencies, or descriptives. Some things like the median, I can only do one way, but for many of them, you have two options of getting to the same answer. All right, let's talk about outliers a little bit. We briefly mentioned the concept of an outlier uh, in topic 2a, and when, when we talked about the mean being sensitive to an outlier, and that's the whole point of the median, really, right? The mean, though commonly used, isn't always going to be perfect. So let's explore the same variable, but see in terms of outliers what we can see. So I want to go Analyze tab at the top, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore, the third one down. Let's make this a little bigger squished. So actually nothing's going to be here when you open it first time. I want to pick my variable to the dependent list, which is age at first birth. So I'm going to move that to the dependent list. Nothing in factor list. And I want to label the cases just by their ID number. That in the label cases by position. Uh, at the bottom, I want to display both. I want to see the numbers as well as a graphical representation uh, of the information. Then I'll click at the top right, the Statistics button. And I want to make sure I have descriptives. I want outliers and percentiles as well. So I'll con click on continue there. Then I want to click the plots button below the statistics button. And I just want to make sure it is. Let me think which one do I want in my blocks plots. I'll pick the first one, factor levels together. And I don't care about the stem and leaf or a histogram right now. This is good enough. Just want that box plot. So I click on OK. And then I am ready. So let's see if I click on this. I can actually zoom in a little bit. I've seen this before. I've seen this before. Can't be right. Oh, it was still calculating, I guess. Stuff here where it says explore. Can I preview print this data set? Print preview. Doesn't want to show me everything. Hmm. Next page. Ah, oh, genius. Genius. Okay, so where do I want to be? Uh, over here, I guess. Zoom in. So we've had this. No, we have not. Okay, <laughs> just want to make sure it looks it looks so similar. Uh, it just adds information at the bottom of your output window, and often uh, I get confused. Like, uh, what's actually new? Uh, so we have some missing cases here. Okay, that's fine. We've seen those things before. Descriptives, not quite the same. Not quite the same. We have the mean, that is the same. 
and we're not going to worry about the confidence interval right now the five percent trimmed mean makes a little bit more sense to me than quartiles in that five percent of the bottom scores are thrown away trimmed five percent the top five percent of scores are trimmed and thrown away as well because that's where the potential outliers will sit and then of the remaining 90 percent the mean is calculated again and i can then compare this mean to the original 19.68 and i see the original was higher if i throw five percent away on either side i get a mean that's a little bit lower what is that tell me it tells me that on the high side there were more extreme values that pulled the mean higher it doesn't seem like a lot but it could still be significant it pulled the mean towards it I throw the same amount of scores away on either side for the trimmed mean and I get uh, an answer that's a little lower so when all the scores were used there were some bigger ones see that in a second especially when i look at the minimum and the maximum here the minimum score is 11.25 that far away from the mean right uh, the original or well, the trimmed mean actually it doesn't even matter the maximum is 42 is much further away so there seems to be some extreme values scores rather some outliers on the high side if i throw the same amount away my mean drops these guys were pulling it away. i see the range interquartile range we've referred to and i see the skewness and kurtosis as i suspected based on the positioning of the mean median mode positive skew and this also says oh, positive kurtosis as well all righty um, let me see what i want to say here just want to not make sure i don't skip anything i made note and skewness yes it confirms what we thought so we have some more percentile information here. We also have the fifth percentile. The score that separates the bottom 5% from the rest, 10th percentile in the quartiles that we, that we had. Okay. And we talked about the trimmed. Now, it doesn't seem to show the 95th percentile. Is it? Oh, it's over here it didn't quite fit so let's just go back to the fifth percentile i see at the bottom here you see the bottom five percent of all scores range from the minimum 11.25 to the fifth percentile so from 11 to 15 is that very bottom portion it's not that wide of a range right so throwing that away is not uh, going to have a super big effect on the, the trimmed mean. But next page, the 95th percentile is starting, well, the 95th percentile is 27.4, which means 95% of the scores are below that, and the top 5% are 27 and above. 27. So I have to go back and forth here, unfortunately. 27 is the cutoff for the top 5%, but they go all the way up to 42. It's a much bigger window, which has a much bigger effect on the mean. Again, we suspect some outliers over there. Percentiles. We actually have a table of suspected extreme values. The, in these in these um, extreme sides, the lower ones, uh, they're not that far away. 
from that um, fifth percentile. Top ones have a much bigger gap. 27.4 in the 95th percentile, all the way to the max of 42. Right. Uh, let's look at the graph, which is visually going to be much nicer to look at, of course, than a list of numbers, right? Okay, so how does this work? Well, we have the center line here, which is the median. Then we have the 25th percentile is the bottom of my box. 75th percentile is the top of my box. So the middle 50% is the box. See, they're pretty tight. They're pretty tight. The line here extending from the box is, in the case of SPSS, one and a half times the interquartile range, the width or the height the height, rather, of this blue box is the interquartile range. One and a half times that further down in either direction. And a good sort of rule of thumb to identify outliers is those scores that sit outside of this one and a half reach. So if I reach down by one and a half, which is graphically indicated here, all the low values fall within that. Nothing on the low side is considered extreme or considered the outliers. But on the high side, there are some. Some pretty close, called mild outliers, and some further out, called extreme outliers. I am honestly not sure where the cutoff between mild and extreme is. And the downside to statistics, dedicated software packages like this, is you're going to have to go and research exactly how does it calculate all these little things. I had to go and look up how does it determine the, these little lines here, one and a half times the interquartile range. But they don't show that, right? all the calculations are done in the background for us. So we definitely have some extreme, some outliers on the high end. You then decide, well, do I want to eliminate the starred ones and recalculate everything to give me a more accurate representation of the whole group of women? Because these outliers, these extreme ones, pull the mean, pull these descriptive statistics, these measures, mean, variance, pull it away. I don't want one score to have that big an effect. When our ultimate goal is to use these measures and these calculated values, values uh, called statistics, calculated from my scores, I want to use that to say things about the properties in general outside of the specific scores that I collected. So it's then up to the researcher to decide which ones are outliers extreme enough to disregard and then recalculate. There's no right or wrong approach here. The most important thing is to very clearly explain we are going to disregard this score here. This is why we're going to do that and include the others. This is how we consider when we consider something to be an outlier. This was our reasoning. This was our decision-making process, and you just want clarity. You just want detail so that you can decide, yes, they're not trying to hide anything. They're not trying to delete some numbers to make their results look better, things like that, because it's a little bit subjective in uh, how to interpret outliers. Someone could, unfortunately, remove things without really explaining what they're doing to make their results look better. So when you 
write a research report or when you read search reports you want clarity at all times so that it, nothing is hidden nothing uh, seems a little bit off whether your interpretation of the outliers agree with someone else's is not necessarily the point the point is that you're clear and open and upfront with uh, how what procedures were followed all right so this hopefully gives us a little bit more of an introduction to SPSS and slowly we'll get more comfortable there might not be an SPSS video for every topic but where appropriate we'll see how things can be done on a larger scale where calculations are done in the background it's a trade-off I can do more things I can do it with larger data sets but not all the calculations, actually no calculations, are really explained to me, especially when it gets to the more subjective ones that have different approaches one could. All right. Until next time.